Are you looking for a way to get realistic drum sounds in your GarageBand projects? Well, so am I. And in this video, I'm gonna test out a new theory using the manual drums and the virtual drummer together to see if we can get the best possible sound. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And I've been working on the drums for this track for some time now, and I just can't get them right. And I did a recent video where I showed how I converted the drummer track to manual drums to get more control, but I just wasn't happy with the sound I was getting. And one of my users, Danny Elliott, suggested, why don't you use the drummer for your fills and the drums for your kick and your snare if you want to get that variety, but have the control over the sound you're getting and I thought what an amazing idea so I've got to try it and in this video we're going to give it a go so let's jump in and take a look now so let's get started with this now in GarageBand because I'm pretty excited to give this a try so here is the track that I've been working on now I've re-recorded these drums down the bottom here there's the rest of the tracks that we've looked at in previous videos and you can check those out up there if you want to find out what we've done so far but let's come in here and take a listen to what these drums are sounding like in the first verse here of our song So, yeah, I, I like the sound that I'm getting there in terms of the control. I've got a nice, simple rhythm, and it's something that I couldn't quite dial in with the drummer. But you may have noticed that this feel, for some reason, it must have been like when, when I first learned to learn, play drums, I just learned that do 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 do. Like every fill I do is just do 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 do, and it sounds really boring and repetitive. So, this is what we want to replace is this bit here. So, don't take so yeah, we can, we can keep that bit there. And what I'll do, let's split these out here now. So what I'm looking at is this bit here, and we'll get rid of this here as well. Although there's no, I've I've not left any hi hat, so I've got separate tracks here for hi hat and for my kick and snare. But it's basically everything from it's really only this half a bar. So it's really only a half a bar worth of fill that I actually want to change up here. So let's just split out here, and we'll first of all try just doing a really subtle half a bar fill with the drummer. So I'm just making some room here. I'm deleting out these drums so that we've got some room here to put in our drummer track. Now let's add in our drummer track. So we need to go to our acoustic drummers. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky because we need to match up the drum kit that one of our drummers is using with the drum kit I've selected. Now I've selected the sunset kit and I happen to know that if we come down to our songwriters, it is our man Graham, our experimental songwriter who uses the sunset kit. Now, there's no real way. Some of the descriptions tell you what they are. One of these days, I'm going to do a complete like chart, a guide to which drummers use which kits. So if you're using for something like this, you can match them up. But let's come back here to our track now. And uh, yep, so you can see there, just by the color and the shape and that sort of, the color and the shape, good Foo Fighters album, you can see the that we've got that matched up there. So what I'm gonna do, let's just get rid of all this other stuff because we obviously don't want Graham playing all through this business. Uh, we're gonna delete that. And we'll just, I'll just get rid of the rest of it. I'm going to copy and paste and add these in as we go along. But let's delete and delete and come in here. So all we want from you, Graham, is we've got it covered until we get to this part here. We'd like you to just jump in and play a fill, please, because Pete is terrible at programming fills. So what can you do for us here, Graham? All right, let's see what he does out of the box by default. Let's just make sure our volumes are kind of matched up here so it doesn't sound out of place. Let's play this back now with Graham doing the fill. All of my time, I don't have much left for you. So don't... Okay, so that's that's not what I wanted. But now we can start the, the process. We can start making Graham play something more like what we want. So we'll tap the drummer icon up the top left here. We'll come into the settings here. So we want it to be a little bit more simple. So we're going to bring it right back down here. Uh, do we want it on the hi-hat? No, we probably want it up on the cymbals. And yeah, let's just play with this. So now we can just sort of start auditioning different fills here that Graham might play. So we'll hit play. So don't. That one's not too bad. That's a little bit more subtle. If we just up the fills here, it changes it every time. Every time we change the level of fills, it changes what fill we have. What is this one going to sound like? So don't. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Still a little bit too complex, I think. How about something like this? So don't. No, that's not going to do it. Bring it back up again. So yeah, it's going to be trial and error. So don't. What was that one like three ones ago? <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> Trying to find the right sort of thing. How about this one, Gray Gray? So 
Mm, that's, that's close. Actually, what about the toms? I kind of think we want to gab off on the toms in this one. Let's see if we can do a tom feel. Ah, see, the fills, the fills sometimes ignore what you say here. You can put all these bits in here, and it sometimes just ignores that anyway. So uh, we'll just keep trying here for a little bit more. Let's we'll just change the kick and snare pattern and see if this gives us anything different. No, that's not going to impact our fills. Uh, what about what we've got here now, Graham? So no, we definitely want something that's a bit more, like, right through. What about this one, Graham? So yeah, okay. That, that's about the, the sort of thing that we want here. So let's just play this back in context and have a listen to what this sounds like. So we come back here with our full track. I don't have much left for you. So don't take all of my time. I don't have much of it. And now I'm hearing that my snare is way too quiet. So I'm going to have to do... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to do some work in here with some uh, volumes. I'm going to have to do some editing here in my original snare because I think I wanted a really subtle sort of snare. Oops, that's not my snare. Neither is that. It's down here. But I've gone too, I've gone too low on the velocity with the snare. Uh, so I'll need to do some a changing of that. But don't worry, I won't make you watch me do all of that. I'll do that outside of this because what I'm going to do now, let's do one more of these. So there's my first one. Now, do we have another fill in here? I don't have much of it left. Yes, we do. So let's just try a different tactic this time. Let's replace the entire last bar and see if this works differently, better, whatever. We'll split these out here. We'll delete and then we'll delete like that. We'll grab this one. Now we can just tap him in copy and then say, Graham, tap over here and hit paste. And there we go. And then if we just extend out the handle, let's see what he does out of the box here. I don't have much of it left. Yeah, so this is probably going to be the problem because he's going to start sort of doing something random there that's outside of the pattern. So I don't think this is going to work quite so well. But if we come in here and let's just adjust him a little bit because we kind of want it to be a little bit more subtle. Let's uh, try that one. Have much of it left for you. Yeah, no, we definitely only want that sort of half of the bar. So we're going to come back here and do some undoing. So we're going to go undo a bunch of times. Undo is your friend. I think I said that in a video like forever ago, and it totally is. So there you go. We'll go back to there. We'll just undo until we get back to that spot. And now we can just do what we did the first time around. Split and split and get a half a bar out of here. Tap, tap, split, uh, delete this one, and then delete this one. And now we can just copy and paste Graham across here. So we're going to come in here and copy. And then tap and tap over here and paste on our playhead. All right, what are you doing for us this time, Graham? Yeah, so that's cool. But and that, that one probably fits better there, in fact. Um, but this is what we can do now. We can come in here, we can come into our drum, and we can start working on some of these fills, and then we can either replicate them or change them up by adjusting the fill amount here, by moving things around here as well and making them less or more complex. Let's just see what we get now. I probably want like more of a snare roll kind of feel here. So let's sort of up it here. It for you. Yeah, something along those lines. That might be a little bit too full on. I'll bring it back a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So that could be kind of cool. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a little bit more variety in my drums. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me do this for all of them. Plus, I have to fix up these snares. So through the magic of editing, I will now go away and then I will come back and I'll be able to play back to you what these drums are sounding like now. And you can let me know if they're sounding better. So I'll see you soon. Oh, and quick bonus tip in the middle here. I'm doing this editing at the moment and I realized I wanted to show you something real quick and that is that look at all these snare hits. Now, if I was a masochist, I would come in here and I would go into each individual snare hit, tap it and up the velocity. Now, because I happen to know that all of these velocities are about the same level because I've tapped them all in here, I can actually increase them all at once. Now, you can't always use this trick. If any one of these velocities was at full, at 100%, this would not work because when you adjust the velocity up, it has to push it up somewhere and if one's already at maximum it leaves them all at the same place if that makes sense so let me show you what i mean i've already done this first section by tapping and dragging <laughs> a square over those first ones and adjusting them and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the entire rest in fact we'll do it in two sections just to be sure so we'll tap and we'll drag drum roll please 
across that whole section. Now we can tap just one of them and do velocity. And if we just up the velocity up a little bit, now when we go back to each of these individual ones, they've all had a little velocity boost. Isn't that cool? So they're not going to all be the same because they didn't start as the same. So velocity increases and decreases multiple selections doesn't change it to that velocity, but it increases it or decreases it by the amount that you increase or decrease. Let's show you one more time with these other ones. We'll tap, we'll drag a rectangle and do our drum roll. We'll tap on one of these, we'll tap velocity, we'll give it a little boost up. And now same thing. All of these are going to have a velocity boost. So some will be higher than others because of the natural way I played them, but they've all got a bit of a boost. So when we come back, this section that was this pesky section here, it's now going to sound a lot better. Take a listen. All of my time, I don't have much left for you. So don't... So the snare hits are now matching the velocity of our drummer between our drums. All right, I'm going off to make the rest of these drummer edits and then we'll come back. I'm back and I'm happy because this is looking good and sounding even better. So what have I done here? Well, we can see here, I've come in here and I've changed up a lot of these fills for my new one. Now I have left some of my old ones. So I left some of my old favorites here so it wasn't completely replaced. I still got a bit of the old. Because I think they sounded okay, just not every single fill. So then we were able to swap it up for some like this. Now, the question is, why do these fills sound better than my fills? Well, if you come in here and take a bit of a closer look, what you'll notice here is that the, the notes are at different sort of volumes, and there's also something called ghost notes, and I'm not going to go into a big thing about ghost notes, but think about notes that you don't really hit. They're so soft, but that's what makes drums sound like drums, as opposed to just boof, ish, oof, ish, that bum, bra, bum, 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 like that sort of thing that a real drummer, as I whack my mic, a real drummer can actually use that articulation on a drum kit. Whereas here in virtual drums, it's harder to do. If you program them manually, if you get the virtual drummer to do them though, it's a lot easier to do. So let's jump in here. So yes, I left in some of mine there. Now there was one down here, uh, where was it? I'll zoom in. So yeah, we came down to here. Now I've left this one in here because I wanted to show the difference between Pete's drum here and then what uh, Graham was able to do on the drums here. So let's uh, let's mute Graham and let's bring Pete back into the mix. So this is what I had originally for this section. You'll find a way to belong and don't so do 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 like the most boring generic uh, feel ever. Whereas if we bring Graham into the mix, let's take a listen to what Graham has to do. The way to belong and don't like how would I ever program that? Like a, a roll on the tom, do 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 do, and it just sounds like it just kicks back into that main chorus and it gives it that flow and that entry point that we wanted. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that bit. The rest of it, yeah, same sort of deal here. So right here at the end, I did the same thing, and you can see the difference between Pete and Graham and the different sort of velocity and the different presence that you can get with that. Presence is not the word, but you know what I mean. All right, the one other thing I did here is in this section here, I wanted to have a bit of accentuation on the hi-hat. So instead of adding this all in manually, I just asked Graham to do it. I just came in here and said, Graham, just give me the, the hi-hat. In fact, I've, I've left these on here. Sorry. Uh, oh, it hasn't worked there. Hang on. Sorry, this hasn't worked the way I thought it had. I thought I had this set up to just have the hi-hats. I did at some point, as in the, sorry, the ride symbols here. So let's just see if I can dial these back in to get these ride, ride symbols. No, for some reason, I can't. Hmm. So it's not actually using it. Oh, well. Um, hmm. That's very peculiar. So I've got some work to do there, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was sounding good anyway, but clearly I, I, I wasn't. I, I'd done something that I thought I had, but I hadn't actually done it. Um, but yeah, the idea there was that we can use, can use the drummer to just add in other things. Although this time it seems that actually if we solo it, is it? Oh, it is actually. Okay. I was, I was right in my, wrongness that makes no sense but yeah so we just have these additional like ting 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 on here which adds to
So just softly in the background, just adding to that rhythm in there. Anyway, that I didn't. That wasn't the best explanation of that. So apologies for that. But you can see here that throughout the whole track, we've been able to add in some variety, and I actually really like this method. I've got a feeling this is going to become my go-to method for recording drums because you get the added flexibility of the drummer, but the added control of the drums. So thank you, Danny. Uh, this was a great suggestion, and I think this is the drums we're going with. So let's now play out. I'll let you listen to what this track's sounding like. Now, when we return, I promise we are going to get into the actual mixing and mastering of this track. We are close. I just couldn't rest until these drums were right, and I thought this was a cool technique that folks out there may want to know about. So let's line this one up, and we'll play back this track and take a listen. Let me know what you think, and we'll return and mix this in the next video. The sound of your voice The feeling I've been here I've been here before If silence is golden Then why are you loud? Don't take all of my time I don't have much left for you So don't take all of my time I don't have much of it left for you I know that you're hurting I hear what you say been down this road and you threw it away time to consider others hurt too don't take all of my time I don't have much left for you so don't take all of my time I don't have much of it left For you say you're trying this time Things will be different, you'll see But I've heard this all before Actions speak louder to me of what you did wrong and don't just throw in the towel you'll find a way to belong and don't waste all of your time thinking of what happens now just live one day at a time that's all the time we'll So there you go. What do you think? I actually think that we've got the best balance between the control we want with the drums and then those great sounding feels from the virtual drummer. Definitely stuff that I could never program in myself. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to Danny Elliott for the tip on this one. And I'll see you on the next video.